Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to do a uh, just a quick one, um, show you how to grind up a chamfering tool. I've got an old piece of high speed steel here that you might have seen in a previous video. It was uh, used as a, just a turning tool but I've uh, used it and used it until there's nothing left of it. I'll just uh, grind the end off it now and uh, show you how to grind up a chamfering tool. You can use it for internal diameters or, out, or external uh, corners and stuff like that. But I'll give you a demo uh, once I've ground it up and uh, show you how to use it. We'll go from there. Just give the wheel a bit of a touch up. That ought to do it. You can actually feel it cutting better. I'll just grind that right off there. I'm moving back and forward, it uses all of the, the grits on the wheel and it also stops me gouging a, a groove in the middle. You can see there now where more than halfway across, that's all I need because I'm going to be taking back this edge here at 45 degrees and that edge there at 45 degrees and then we'll work on the clearance below that. I'm holding it up this way to get my clearance angle and about 45 degrees that way and we'll check it once we get close. Got my finger on the on the tool rest there just to stop it waggling around. My protractor set at 45 degrees there. We can uh, get it up the right way. Just make sure we're on the right approach. See that's pretty close there. I'll grind it till I'm halfway, halfway across. about halfway across there now looking at it in the end we've got our front clearance ground in there we're going to have to adjust that in a minute and we've got about 45 degrees on there so now we'll do the same thing on the other side alrighty getting closer now I'm down to the point there. Got a nice, oh, you can just see a tiny little mark on the end there, but that'll come off in a minute. We've got our 45 degrees that way. It's off by a tiny bit. Eh, not really, pretty close. And 45 degrees the other way we get a 90 degrees like that so that's going to be well and truly good enough for what we need next we need to grind some um, top rake back this back that way on on the top 
there's no to, no side rake left or right because we can cut from either direction so we're just going to grind back rake um, and then I'll, we need to add some extra clearance down this side and I'll explain that in a minute so for the, for the back rake we'll come at it like this but I'll, I'll try and keep it fairly square to the wheel that way and I only need to come back about as far as the, the side there So we'll start off like that. clean surface on the top there and you can see there's a little bit of rake angle like I mentioned in the other video aim for about eight degrees but I'm not even going to measure it I kind of know that's looking like a lathe tool should look the only other thing we need to do now is we need to add some extra clearance under here on this side you imagine if we we're chamfering that hole in there see how this hole curves around at the bottom there if we were chamfering this hole like that if the smaller the hole gets the less clearance we have down here get in the light the less clearance we have down here so what we're going to do is is uh, grind this side away just like we would on a drill because it's the same kind of principle the, the, the metal is curling around underneath and going to whack into it so um, you can kind of see maybe you can't you can kind of see there So it's the same action that uh, you saw me do in sharpening a drill. You can go and find that video if you haven't already seen it. Link up the top. I haven't, haven't actually ground up to the cutting edge yet. I'm still working on the clearance. If we look from the front there now, you can see that side sweeps away. got our, our back rake without any side rake our front clearance this way and the front clearance that way with a whole pile of extra clearance for the internal diameters if we're cutting on the other side when we're doing outside stuff there's no uh, there's nothing peeling underneath so let's get over to the lathe or oh, actually before we do that let's uh, just touch it on the stone For this I just used a little diamond hone. So just maintaining your clearance angles there. I'll just give it a little touch on the front edge. This takes out any pattern left in the edge by the wheel. This is essentially a form tool because the, form, the shape we want is um, ground onto the tool. Normally form tools are reserved for woodworkers. Around the other side. And we'll do the top as well. You 
you can barely see anything when we do that but it just takes you can just see it shines up the edge there a little bit you might see it more on the front just a tiny bit anyway let's go over to the lathe and uh, give that a go here is the uh, um, turning and facing tool we made the other day we're just going to use that to face off um, this face and we'll turn down a little bit just to clean it up above centre there, I could feel it when I got to the middle. Touch it off on the outside. Come along there about 20 mil. I'm going to put a um, a half inch hole down the inside. We'll start off with a center drill. This drill is uh, 31 64th, so it's 1 64th less than half an inch. Half an inch is the finish size. I want to go down about an inch, or 25 mil. That's 20 mil, so oh, a little bit less, because um, we'll, we'll part this off later. So this uh, um, tailstock has a, um, uh, a 10 teeth per inch screw in it so one turn is a hundred thou so i'll go down oh, four and a half turns here we've got our full diameter so i'll go uh, four and a half turns from there This is my half inch drill, which is my finished size. Let's just slow that down a bit. If you want to see how the speeds work on this old lathe, you can uh, have a look in the video that I described that with. Now 
Now the back of this drill should be a, exactly half an inch. A couple of thou under. Excuse my old mic, I've had it since I was 16. Yeah, two thou under, so that should give us a pretty good idea if we put that in the back there, how close we come to our size. It's got a tiny bit of clearance. Now we get to use our chamfering tool. I've already set the center height on this. Just let me square that up a bit. We can just touch it on the inside there. Get a nice little 45 degree angle. And on the outside, the other way. Now parting off is a whole other adventure. And I'm, I'll probably do that in another video. This is my parting off tool. I'm just going to check that I've got enough room there to make it all the way to the hole, and I do. We'll make sure we get it nice and square, otherwise the clearance doesn't work. Let me know if you want me to do a video on parting off. That looks pretty good. Another way you can check your centre height is by sticking a ruler in here and just touching your tool against it. And then if you look down from this direction, which you guys won't be able to see, you're, uh, all right, I'll give you a look. You'll see there that the ruler, this thing here, is uh, vertical. If it's, if it's leaning this way, you're above center, and if it's leaning this way, you're below center. Hope that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. It's just another way that uh, you can set your tool on center height. Now we're going to have to go way slower for this. Let's see how that goes. Now this job is sticking out a fair way and I can't make it any closer because of the diameter of the chuck, or the diameter inside the chuck. So if this vibrates, I'm not going to be able to part it off. that. Mm. The other choice, I'm going to make a few tool marks on my nice shiny surface there. One choice is to cut it off with a hacksaw. Another choice is to turn it around like that. and part it off up close to the chuck. That's running through. Give that a good tighten. Come up to where I was. Somewhere there. You can't see a bloody thing now, can you? Let's try that way around. Maybe slower.
Here we go. Don't let anyone tell you you can't part off on an old lathe. But anyway, that gives you the idea what I'm talking about. What I'll do now is just uh, see if I can get my chamfering tool in there. When I put this tool in here now, of course it faces the wrong way. Which is why it's handy to have two of those tools, which is why I made myself the second one. So we can just pop that around there like that. Now let's see if I can get in there without hitting the chuck. That would be a no. So I'll need to To bring it out a little bit more. Just I've done it up nice and tight. Close enough for what we need. This is just going to touch it. Just that one edge there. Probably a bit slow now, but it's good enough for what we want. Okie dokie. That's how we do a chamfering tool. I'll go ahead and finish parting that off. Okay, guys, that'll probably do it. I got through in the finish. Um, I ended up just cutting it off with a hacksaw. Um, that's cheating. But you can see this was really about the chamfer. And uh, you can see I put nice chamfers on there, the other side too. So that uh, this piece just goes over this uh, bit of copper tube. <laughs> it's supposed to. Uh, I must have a little flare on the end of that tube there. I'll cut that off and I bet it'll go on. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff or you have some ideas of what you'd like me to do, um, just drop us a comment below. Um, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, that uh, really helps out the channel. So thanks guys. See you on the next one. Oh, I can't really see you. All right, all right, we've got a chamfering tool. So I chamfered it. It goes on now. Almost. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I think I've got a little burr inside there. Could just call that a press fit. Maybe I'll need to get a half inch reamer onto that now. The size is too good put a boring bar down there there was just a little of a bit of a burr on one end now it goes on now thanks for watching